So today we're going to be looking at uh, the sermon entitled The Principles of Effective Prayer. Prayer is two ways, two way things. Somebody is talking, somebody there is listening, another person is talking, somebody there is listening. You know, the challenge we have as Christians is that we only pray and pray and pray and it is to hear from God. Some of us will pray like blind or dead people. You don't even know that God is talking to you. When you pray small, you will wait and let your spirit hear to hear God. That's what I'm saying. Because the most important thing about prayer is not whether you are healed, okay, or you are blessed at the time you are praying. But the most important thing is to hear from God. Okay? The most important thing about prayer, I repeat, the most important thing about prayer, when we pray, is not whether God heals us or not, but do we hear from God what He's saying about our situation? So that is why today we're going to be looking at the principles of affecting prayer. prayer. Prayer is reminding God of what He has promised us. Okay? That is the biblical term for prayer, definition. Reminding God of what He has promised us. You are trying to remind Him. Whatever God has not promised us, He cannot do to us. Okay? You might be asking that somebody should die when you are praying, your uncle should die, this should die. Is it the will of God to do that? So prayer is uh, continuously, okay, reminding God of what He has promised to do. In Numbers 23 verse 19, he said, God is not a man to lie, not a son of man to be right. As he says something to you, he will do it. As he spoke, he will bring it to pass. So, prayer is part of us as Christians. Jesus started his ministry with prayer. And he ends his ministry with prayer. God will not give to you what he has not promised you. Okay? So, prayer is constantly asking God and reminding him of what he has promised us. Okay? We have two types of prayers. We have individual prayer or personal prayer and we have corporate prayer. The one we have today now is corporate. Okay, corporate prayer. The one I did in the night in the, in the prayer room is what we call personal prayer or individual prayer. Okay. So the first uh, principle of, of effective prayer is that for our prayer to be effective, it has to come from a righteous act. For our prayer to be effective, it has to come from where? A righteous act. In Psalm 66, verse 18, it says, If I know that there is sin in my heart, the Lord will not answer my prayers. In Proverbs chapter 15, verse 8, it says, The prayer of a sinner is an abomination in the sight of God. So, when you are a pastor or a bishop, a reverend, and you are praying, nothing is happening, you have to examine yourself. According to Isaiah chapter 1, 
my cycle for seven. Okay? God don't answer our prayer in the midst of sin. You see, I want to get the one who has taken right now. You see, the eyes of the Lord are too pure to be all sin. That is the difference between us and all that. Not that we are perfect, not that we are better than them. The difference between this name of God and us is the foundation. Foundation. Foundation of righteousness. The gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is a good news. But the message of the gospel is righteousness and the Holy Ghost. Let's open our Bible to the book of uh, James chapter 5, verse 17 and 18. Elias was a, a man subject to like passion as you are. He said, What he said is that there is no difference between us and Elijah. Okay? No difference. What makes Elijah to be different is because the kind of life he has chosen to live. Okay? The kind of life he chose to live. Living God's life, living righteously, is a choice and it's a decision. Wherever you see God's power is absence, sin is at war. Wherever you see God's power is absence, sin is at war. Yes, Elijah was a man subject to like passion as we are. That is Elijah. Yes, and he prayed earnestly. He prayed. Yes. Earnestly that it may not rain. That it should not rain. And it rained not. On last two weeks Sunday, you know in this community I stopped rain from falling. Yes, sir. Hope you know. Yes. And there was rain everywhere. After we finished roofing our church, they jubilate. Because Every Sunday we must stop rain from uh, falling. Okay. They are blaming us, calling me Abalis. I stop rain. Their farm and their this is not working, it's not growing because of this man. Yes. And he pray earnestly that it might not rain. And it might not rain. And it rain not on the earth by the space of three and a half. Three and a half years. Yes. And he prayed again. And he prayed again. And the heaven gave rain. Yes. And the earth brought forth her fruit. So let's go to verse 16. You can see what prayer can do. Confess your fault one to another. Yes. Confess. And pray one for another. Confess your sin to one another. Yes. And pray one to another. To another. Yes. That ye may be healed. Yes. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. You see now, of a righteous man, the first principle of principles of effective prayer is that it is based on righteousness. It is based on righteousness. The first principle of effective prayer is that it is based on what righteousness when you are not the member of this church you see me sleeping on somebody I bet you stood up and begin to walk you will complain you will give me name because your pastor can't do it okay not all parastamo are fake Some are still genuine. You cannot claim to be a Christian, an apostle, a pastor, a prophet, and not be able to do what Jesus did while he was here on earth. You know, 
He says, Here in our lovely perfect, that we might have boldness on the day of problems, crisis. Because as Jesus is, while he was here, so are we now. We are Jesus now. The fourth principle of effective prayer is based on righteousness. The prayer God, that, that God answers must come from a righteous act. If it's not, that's why you pray and pray and pray for 20 years and see us experience God's power. Let's go to John chapter 9, verse 31. Now we know. It says, now we don't know in the past, but now we know that God heareth no sinner. God will not hear the prayers of sinners. For if any man be a worshiper of God, if any man be a worshiper of God, and doeth his way, and does his way, he heareth. Him will God hear. First John chapter 3, 22. He said, we know that when we ask for bread, when we ask for healing, he will give us. Because we do his commandment and do those things that pleases him. Everything on this earth are subject to God because they are servant of God. Rain is a servant of God. Sun is a servant of God. Ocean is a servant of God. Human being is a servant of God. Everything God created is to serve God. That's why we call them, and we say, Ray, you are a servant of God. I'm a servant of God. Hear me. Don't talk today. Let son replace you. You know what I mean in the name of Jesus. The rain will stop. So, principles of effective prayer is based on righteousness. When we live a righteous life, there's no way God will not answer us. Let's go to Hebrew chapter 1 verse 9. Thou hast loved righteousness. Yes. And hated iniquity. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Yes. Therefore God Therefore, God, even that God, even that God, had anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. This is the difference between men of God. This verse. Please look at it well. This is the difference between us as men of God. This is the difference. Okay? Righteousness will not allow you to sleep with the church member, righteousness will not allow you to deceive them. Okay? Righteousness will not allow you to fall night then. That's what I'm saying. If this is your goal to pursue as a man of God, you'll be anointed. You can see the difference. Can you pick it from the beginning again? Thou have loved righteousness. Thou have loved righteousness. And hated iniquity. And hated iniquity. Therefore God. Therefore our God. Even thy God. Even our God has anointed thee with the oil of gladness. Has given us grace and anointing above thy fellow. Above other pastors. Above other Christians. When you are a poor Christian, okay? When you are a Christian and you are poor for 20 years, you are a sinner. Okay? Or you are ignorant. Either of the two. Poverty comes to Christian or two, in two ways. One, sin, through sin. Two, through ignorance. Because you can born again and still be ignorant. You can born again and still be foolish.
You can born again and still be foolish. How are you foolish? For example, you are a 32 years old lady and you are looking for water. You remove your earring. You put scarf and cover your hair. You do not put cream on your face. You fast all your breasts away and your buttock away. Your Christianity in Africa, to me, is fake. You know why? Because it's not rooted in the scripture. It's doctrinal. Okay? Those who asked not to wear jeans in those days, today they are wearing jeans. Those who asked not to watch television today, in those days, today they are watching television. When you want to hear God where, go to a prophet, a genuine man of a Jew, a genuine prophet. So, for us as Christians, for God to answer our prayer, we must try as much as possible to live an holy life. Let's go to Psalm 107, verse 17 to 19. Fools, because of their transgression. Yes. And because of their iniquity are afflicted. Who oh, because of their transgressions and because of their iniquities are afflicted. Afflicted with what? Sickness, poverty, death, all of this. Okay? Sickness, poverty, all of this. It is good for us to understand that God will not answer your prayer when you live or submerge yourself in sin, God will not answer your prayer. Yes? They are so abhorred all manners of meat. All manner of meat and food, yes. And they draw near unto the gate of death. And they are almost dying. Then they cry unto the Lord. And they cry unto the Lord. In their troubles. In their what? In their trouble. In their troubles. And he saved them out of their distresses. And he saved them out of their distresses. He sent his word. He sent his word. And healed them. He sent his word. And healed them. If you want God to really answer your prayer. You want to get out of poverty. You want to get out of this sickness. You want to get out of this problem. The first thing to do. Is to. Search for righteousness. Get yourself away from sin. The reason why many Christians are poor is because of their sin. Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 4. What did he say? And from 24 to 26. Verse 24 to 26. Let it read verse 4 first. Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 4. And then from 24 to 26. Therefore, therefore I said, Yes. Surely these are poor. These people are poor. They are foolish. They are foolish. For they know not the way of the law. They do not know the rules and regulations of God. Okay? Stop complaining that God does not answer your prayer. You have to do the needful. Search yourself. And do that which is good. And then God will answer your prayer. Okay. Can you read further? Verse 24. Yes. He said, Neither say they in their heart. They never say in their heart. Let us now fear the Lord. Let's fear the Lord. Our God. Our God. That giveth rain. That giveth rain. Both the former and the latter. Both, yes. In a season. In the season, he reserved unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. Yes. Your iniquity have turned away these things. Your sin and your sin have withholded good things from you. Your sin as we as prophet we take the issue of sin so serious. Okay? The issue of sin is so serious. So serious that 
Without you trying to get out of such circle, you will not see God's power manifesting your life. He said, because of sin, your harvest has been taken away. What is causing all this flood? They, they call uh, what do they, they call it? It's because it's a sign of an end of the year, or the end of the world. It's a sign. You cannot stop it. Even the American government couldn't stop it. You know how many people that die in America, in Florida? Talk less of uh, uh, this country. Because the world is about to end. So, the first principle of effective prayer is based on righteousness. We cannot be committing sin and think God will hear us. Let's go to Isaiah 59, verse 1 to 3. Behold, Behold the Lord's hand is not short. God's hand is not short. That he cannot save. That he cannot save you. Neither is he a heavy. His ear is not deaf. He's not that, happy. That he cannot hear. That he cannot hear. But your iniquity, your sins, have separated you and your God. Your sins. And your sin have hid his face from you. How can you be a pastor? You're having sex with your member. What betrayed you when one of them has cancer of the breast? You will give them money to go and cut it. Because spiritual power is what translates to physical power. Spiritual power is what translates to physical power. When you lack spiritual power, you have lacked everything. Somebody say we don't preach. We don't do our hand like this. Thing happen. No. I don't sell anointing oil. I don't sell anointing water. Because Matthew chapter 10, verse 8, it says, freely you receive. Freely you must give. It's unto me to pray for you. And God answer me. It's unto you to support my ministry by your own volition, not by force. If you don't need God, God will withdraw his presence from you. We must need God. We must look for God. We must want God for God to remain with us. You so say your iniquity has separated you from where? From your God. From your God. So, you can see what Bible is saying. Sin brings satanic present, not God's presence. It says, effectual fervent prayer a righteous of a righteous man. We what? We are vain. Too much of prayers without acting on the word only expose more to poverty, sickness, and failure. The name of Jesus, 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 the name of Jesus. When you see somebody's wife, Butok, the name of Jesus, your pre Christian, the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus. Only Satan will hear you and your neighbors. You don't need to be making noise in your room and, your, and be disturbing your neighbor. You won't go and hear you. That is hypocrisy. Make noise. You put megaphone outside. Those in other community, they'll be hearing you. But when they come to your church, one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten, will be there. Why are you making noise? You cannot attract them with the kind of uh, sweet prayer. When they hear that somebody is ill or cured of cancer in your church, they will locate it by themselves. 
So, we must understand that our prayer to be effective, it has to be based on righteousness. Number two, the second principle of effective prayer is based on the will of God. It's based on God's way. Sometimes when I have my lady on time for it, I will not want to use tablet. I will say, how can me seek? Me that God used to raise dead body, not one. How can I seek? But that is arrogance. God always, okay, look a way to humble us as a servant or Christian to humble you so that you will know that you cannot excel with uh, God. So sometimes we just allow you to seek. You have to come down to the level of human beings to use parastamol or typhoid or malaria. If not, you will not be able to get up. There was a day I was so sick. Okay. That they thought I would not come on Sunday. When I came here and I was praying, before I go back to the house, I got healed. But if I say, oh, because I'm healed, I will not, I'm sick, I cannot come. That sickness will remain with me. Let's go to First John. First John chapter 5, verse 14. First John. Is it the will of God for you to be here, here today? Is it his will? If it's his way, when you pray, it will heal you. Is this God's way for you to be rich this year? If it's his way, when you pray, okay, he will bless you. If it's the will of God for you to be married this year, when you prayed, then the right man will come. Our prayer must be located in the will of God. We must pray according to His way. So let's read that place for us. And this is the confidence that we have in Him. This is the confidence that we have in Him, yes. If we ask anything according to His will. To so what? His will. So his will. He heareth us. He hears us. Is it the will of God for me to leave Lagos and come here? It's his will. That's why I was able to succeed since five years till now. This ministry is now five years in this your state and some month. It's the will of God. The second principle of effective prayers is based on the will of God. You see, the will of God for you to be here today, to be healed, if it's his way, you'll be healed. If it's his will, you'll be saved. If it's his will, you'll be blessed. God don't answer all prayers. Please note it. God don't answer every prayer or all prayers. He answers our prayer according to his uh, will. For a poor sick, he prayed almost three years. When he disturbed God too much, God says, it is my will for you to be sick. Let that sickness remain with you. 
sick and sick and die in his sickness. In the midst of his sickness, he was raising the dead. It's God's way. God has a way of trying to humble us so that we will not miss his path for our life. So when you are sick, rejoice. When you are poor, rejoice. When you are going through temptation, rejoice. Who knows what is the will of God? If it's the will of God, that sickness, temptation is to okay enrich you more. Is to empower you for more or more services in the kingdom of God. Number three, the principle of effective prayer is based on persistent and continued prayer. It's based on persistent and continuous prayer. Let's go to Isaiah 62. From verse 6 to 8. I have set watchmen upon the walls. Yes. O Jerusalem. O Jerusalem. We shall neither hold their peace day or night. Yes. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep no silent. Ye that do what? Make mention of the Lord. Yes. Keep no silent. And give him no rest. And give him no rest. Till he establish, until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Let's go to Luke chapter 11. Let's read from verse 5. And he said unto them, Yes. Which of you shall have a friend? Yes. And shall go unto him at midnight? Yes. And say unto him, Friend. Lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine in his journey is come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not. The yes. door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend. Yet because of his impunctuality, he will write and give him as many as he needed. Continue. And I say unto you, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Yes. For everyone that asketh receiveth. Yes. And he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be open. Even shall ask bread of any of you yes. that is a father. Will he give him a stone? Will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? A serpent. Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? Yes. If then they be evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children. How much more shall your heavenly father? Give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him. How much more will they give us good things if we cease to pray? Okay? Don't cease to pray. Continue praying and praying. One woman was sick for 20 years in this, in this state. I think it's a member now. He has prayed and prayed for 20 years. He said he has shown seat even in a church everywhere. He said he was sick for 20 years. I said, it's good that you stop, you, you do not stop to pray. It's good that you show seat. The seed you have shown and the prayer you have prayed is what brought you here. And now you are healed. Did I collect money from you? No. And I prophesize for you on the basis of money? No. So, the principle of effect here 
is based on persistent and continuous uh, prayer. Don't give God any chance. Don't be weak. We see that your problem is becoming so big. You know you are almost getting breakthrough. When the pains increase where? And uncontrollable. You will know light is coming at the end of the tunnel. That's how you know that your problem is about to be solved. When it becomes so hard, so big, that's when God comes. When it is easy, God don't come. God come when it is very hard to do. That's why God will not share his name with us. Nor give his sins to idol. Anything doctor cannot do become a curse. Only God can take a curse away. What a man cannot do, cannot heal, become a curse. Only God can take curse away. Because he's stronger than man. He's stronger than the... Let's go to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2. The principles of effective prayer, okay, is based also on faith. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2. Verse 2, and then Luke chapter 11. Luke 11, verse uh, 4. For unto us was the gospel preached. For unto us was what? The gospel preached. Yes. As well as unto them. As well as unto them. Unto them. But the word preached did not profit them. Yes. Not be missed with faith in them that heard it. The one that was preached does not permit uh, them. Because they did not do what? Miss it with faith. They did not miss it with uh, faith. Mark 11, 22 to 26. And Jesus answering said unto them, Yes. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Yes. Be thou removed. Be thou removed. And be thou cast into the sea. And yes. shall not doubt in his heart. Be healed. You that say be healed. And the person that say amen. Do you believe? Is your amen coming from your heart? Or from your mouth? Be healed. Should come from uh, our heart. Amen. Should come from our heart. Is in the heart we believe, not in the mouth. In the heart. I was preaching here one day. One man came from Ghana. He has a swollen leg. He leaped to this church. You know the man now, the man that says, that was crying here, that says he's going back to his country. Why is he crying? It's not because of the miracle, but because of the word I used to preach. I was preaching about faith. Nobody prayed. The swollen leg disappeared. Nobody prayed. He was having, I think, cancer of the, he had cancer for 25 years. And it was here, God healed him. Since that time, you don't see me praying for him again. He will just come on Sunday with his sickness. Before the sermon end, he's healed. You see, faith confined on us the divinity of God. Faith confined on us. The divinity, the nature of God. 
Faith, okay, separates us from humanity. Faith separates us from humanity and makes us supernatural. That is faith for you. Don't be tired to pray when you are 35 years that you know man. If you are a genuine Christian and you have faith, there's no way you will not marry. The best man will still come to you. That's why in Hebrews chapter 10, in 35 to 37, he said, keep on with your faith. The man that will come, will come. And he will not waste time. Can you complete that verse for me? Mark chapter 11. For verily I say unto you, yes, that whatsoever shall say, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, to this mountain, be thou removed, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, yes, and shall not doubt in his heart, in your heart, don't doubt, but shall believe that those things which he says, yes, shall come to pass, yes, he shall have whatsoever he said. You can see now, somebody was brought here paralyzed. You know the girl. The yeah. girl that was removing saliva from the mouth. And paralyzed. Boot up paralyzed. Leg paralyzed. Mouth bent. She has stopped going to school for one year. Is that not so? You know the woman now. She stopped going to school for one year. The woman back and to this church. And I say, when you get home, God would have healed your daughter. Then she backed the woman, the lady again, to the house. She now left the lady in the house and go to the market. When she was coming back by the market, the guy was doing like this to the toilet. He said, hey, you, are, you don't walk out, go to yourself. Say, yes, mama, I don't walk out, go to the toilet. Second day, the lady went to the bathing room and paid by herself. That is how it is until they came to testify and the lady was running. One year paralysis. One year. Mouth bent, hand bent, leg bent. When the lady is talking, can't talk. Saliva will be coming out of her mouth. The man that was ill of kidney stone, when I gave water for him to drink, to him to drink, he went home within two, three, four days, one week. He got healed. One lady came here with a dead baby inside her womb. He said, I'm on my children now. That's what make her to remain in this church since I came from Lagos. In Grotet. He didn't tell me. I said, this baby is dead. He said, no. I said, this baby is dead. It's not alive. The mother now rushed out. He said, it is true. The doctor has told us this morning to go and evacuate. Yes. He might even be in the church now hearing me. So, we just gave anointing water for her to drink and something to shake small in our tummy. Today, I think the baby is about four years now. Oh, yes. Another lady again was pregnant and then it was having cancer from a uh, Yeah, God bless you. He says, the doctor says, the only way we can treat this cancer is that we must evacuate your baby, which is already three months. And they came. I said, God is not uh, a complete person. 
if God allow you to take him, the same God knew or knows that you have to deliver the baby. Leave the baby. Don't go for hospital. Okay. Let us base our faith on God. The next time, after two months, he went to the same hospital. They said, uh, I think we asked to go and remove this baby. They placed on test again. The cancer disappeared. The baby was okay. And then she gave birth to the baby at the ninth uh, month. Somebody was brought from Iwari, that I said, you cannot walk with appetite B and C. You brought the person. Appetite B and C. Today, after prayer, he stood up and walked because he have had our horse. Your purpose of coming here today is because you have heard about what God is using us to do. Okay? That's why you came. My advice for all of us is that put your demand to faith, not me. Okay? Know that there's a God in me that can cure you, but not me in person. So please, let us stand up. Let's stand up. Call plus 234. 803-846. 3326 to book an appointment with the Son of Man today.